What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes, and in this video we're going to be creating this video feed website using React and Supabase storage. The website's going to allow users to upload MP4s to a feed where they can scroll through and look at all the different videos. For example, we can choose a file, select a new video to upload, and then that video is going to get shown in our feed here. Although this tutorial doesn't use authentication, I have another image gallery video that explains the Supabase storage concepts way more in depth. This video is more focused on understanding how we can upload videos to Supabase as fast as possible. Let's get started by setting up Supabase. We can start by going to supabase.com and then signing in. Now we want to create a new Supabase project, which we can do by pressing new project at to the top left. Give the project a name, generate a password for your database. We won't be using this, but save this in a text file. Choose a region closest to you, then create new project. Supabase is then going to set up our project, so give this a couple minutes. All right, so once you see this page, that means we are good to go. In this video, we are going to be using Supabase storage, so you can press storage right here. From here, we are going to create a bucket to store our videos in, so we can press new bucket on the top left. Name this bucket videos, and for the purpose of this video, the bucket is going to be 100% public. This warning's okay, that means we're gonna deal with this in a second, so press create bucket. Now that we have our bucket fully created, we can go to policies, and then we're gonna create some policies to how people can access videos. The first policy, when you press new policy on the top right, and then go to full customization, we want people to be able to select and insert into this video's bucket. Select allows the person to download or list the files. So for example, when you load the website, and then insert allows us to use the upload and copy and things like that. We're not gonna target this at any specific role. So that means anyone who uses our Supabase website, whether they're logged in or not, is going to get these permissions. I'm just gonna name this policy, select and insert permissions. We can press review on the bottom right. These look good, so we can press save policy, and you should see a select and an insert here. This means that when we get started with Supabase in React, we're going to be able to use things like select and also things like insert. Let's get started building our React application. So we can start by opening up an empty folder and then going to an empty terminal and saying npx create-react-app, and I'm going to name this app client. All right, once that's done, we can go into client by saying cd client, now we are within our React application and we want to npm install a couple packages. I'm going to npm install the most important package at supabase slash supabase dash js. Then I'm going to install UUID to create unique IDs for the files we upload. And then for the styling of the application, I'm going to use a bootstrap and then a react dash bootstrap styling. So just very basic. It's not the main focus of this tutorial. So I press enter to install these. All right, so your package.json should look something like this. We can now go into our source folder and go into app.js, which is where the majority of our coding is gonna go down. This is just the boilerplate for our React application. We can now get rid of everything in this return statement, so I'm just gonna make it a React fragment to get rid of the little error if we just had nothing. At the top, I'm going to import the CSS for bootstrap by saying import bootstrap slash dist slash CSS slash bootstrap dot min dot CSS. I'm then going to import the container from React Bootstrap. This is gonna give us a container to wrap around our code pretty much and give it some styling around our entire application. So we can go in here, get rid of the fragment and just make a container. I'm gonna use class name is equal to mt-5 for some margin top of this container. And then we add some style, which is gonna make the width of the container only 700 pixels. And so now I'm going to import the form from above here because I'm gonna make a very simple upload form for our users to use. So first we can say h1 to show just the name of the website. I'm gonna say video feed. We can then make a form.group to show that we are going to put an input here. I'm gonna give this some classes for styling as well. For example, a margin bottom of three and a margin top of three. We can then label our input by saying form.label, upload your video here. Then the actual file input is called a form.control. We can make this be a type of file and you want it to only accept video slash mp4. So you wanna make sure to find some type of example mp4 file for you guys to use. If you just look up like mp4 online, you'll find a bunch of examples. And so whenever this form changes, for example, on the on change event, so a file input is only ever going to change. So it's gonna hit this on change event when a file gets uploaded. So we can take this event from the change, which is going to contain the file, and then send it over to something called upload file, which is a 
function that we can create. For now, I'm just gonna make this an asynchronous function, upload file with the event. I'm just gonna have a console.log upload. That's all I'm gonna do for now. Let's npm start our application and see it working. Oh, and just if you guys are following along character by character, I misspelled bootstrap up here so we can respell that bootstrap, how it should be spelled. And now we can go into our application. I'm just gonna inspect element to test this out and see the console log. So we see our user interface here, which is great. Now we can choose a file. I have all these test mp4s, so I'm just gonna choose one of them here. And you'll see that upload event gets triggered when we upload the file. Now we can get started on getting that upload functionality working with Supabase. So we can go to our React application and say import create client from at supabase.js like this. This is how we are going to initialize our Supabase client. So we can say, so to save our client to a variable, we can say const Supabase is equal to create client. This is going to take in two different strings. The first one is the URL of our Supabase, and then the second one is the anon key. So we can go and grab those by going over to the Supabase website, and then we can go to the top left and press home. If you scroll down from home like this, you're gonna see your project API here. We can grab the project URL by pressing copy here, pasting it into this string, and then grab the API key by pressing copy here and pasting it in. And so now we have a fully initialized Supabase client, which is great. When we interact with our Supabase, we're actually interacting with the CDN when we save files to Supabase. So one thing I like to do is I like to say the const CDN URL is equal to a URL we can create up here. And this is going to simplify our code by having it so we don't have to write this CDN URL everywhere in our application. So it's going to use the same base URL you have up here. And we're gonna go into the slash storage slash v1 slash object so object storage is what we're using then slash public and for this video i'm going to have it go all the way into the slash videos bucket because this is the only bucket we're going to use and i'm also just going to leave a slash at the end here and so if we were to access a certain file that we save to our cdn you would go to this root and then you go to the file name for example test file.mp4 and if you type this into a web browser, you'd be able to grab that specific video. So that's enough CDN talk. Now let's actually upload a file to Supabase. I'm going to use a syntax where you say const objects like this is equal to an await Supabase statement. This means we can get the error from our Supabase request is how you guys should think about that. I'm then going to access the supabase.storage. And then to make the syntax easier, I'm gonna go on the next line and do the next dot. So I'm gonna say from our videos bucket, I want to then dot upload a certain file. To get the file from our event, we can say const video file is equal to event.target, so the actual file input. Then we can, from there, we can grab the files of that specific file input and get the first one. For the name of our file, I'm going to go to the top and then import v4 as uuid v4 from uuid. This is gonna give us a universal identifier of a specific video. So we can make kind of like keys specific to a certain video. So when we call UUID V4 like this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us a string that's pretty much being generated by this function. And so if we wanted to make a kind of like random file name, we could just get that string and say .mp4 at the end. So we can call UUID V4 like this. Then I'm going to add that .mp4 to the end of it. And then we need to give the file body of the actual file we're uploading. That's gonna be from our video file variable that we just got at line 17. If there is an error here, I'm going to console.log the specific error. I'm also just going to alert error uploading file to Supabase. So right now we have all the functionality we need to upload to Supabase. So let's try it out. I'm gonna choose a file. It looks like we got no errors, so we can go over to Supabase, go to our storage, go to videos, and we'll see we have the saved video that we just uploaded. And so this is pretty cool. Now we're gonna make a function to grab all the different videos from this folder. I'm gonna import two things at the top here initially. I'm going to import use state and use effect from React. We're gonna use the use state to store videos and then the use effect when the user initially hops on our website and we load videos. So we are gonna use use state down here and we can say const videos comma set videos is equal to a use state, which is gonna be an empty array. This array is going to store all of our kind of like metadata of the videos. And so now we can make our async function to actually get videos. We can then say const 
data comma error is equal to a superbase call that's going to grab the videos. So await superbase. And just to show you guys, you can do the syntax kind of however you want. For example, in this one, I'm going to use the dot storage down here. Then I'm going to say dot from a specific bucket. We want the videos bucket dot list. And then we want to list from the base path of our bucket. So all of our videos are being stored like this right in that base path. And so we're going to get all the videos by listing them like this. This data here is going to give us an array like this. An important thing to note here is that video one is going to look something like an important thing to note here is that the video metadata is going to have the name of the video. So for example, Cooper codes video dot MP4. And so then to get this video, we're going to go to our CDN link.com slash this video. And that's how we're going to access the data specifically. So if data doesn't equal null, we're then going to set our videos with the data and data is going to look like this, just so you guys know. Otherwise, I'm going to do the same thing and just copy this error code from down here, <laughs> log the error and then say error grabbing files from Superbase. And when we're done uploading a file, I'm then going to refresh the videos by saying get videos at the bottom here. And then a very simple way in React to just grab videos initially is we want to say use effect is equal to an effect like this. And we're going to give it an empty array. So this is only going to run when the user initially loads our website. And I'm just going to say when the user initially loads, run the get videos. And we can even console.log videos to see what's being stored right now. So let's go over to our website and see what that looks like. We can see that we are getting one object of data, which is showing all the metadata of the one uploaded file in our bucket. So now we can make some code to display all the different videos inside this array. Going to scroll to the top and import row, column, and also card from Bootstrap. So I'm going to make a row here, which is just going to have one item per row. So extra small is equal to one. Class name is going to be some general padding and margin of four. So G-4. Then I'm going to map through the videos array. So at each object in the videos array, we're going to have a certain video. Just for learning sake, I'm going to console.log the video at each one so you guys can see that. And then I'm going to return the element we want to make with this specific video. So I'm going to say the column here. I'm going to make a card element, which is going to be very simple. It's going to have a video element from HTML, which I'm going to give a height of 380 and give it controls as well. Then I'm going to say source. So this is the source of the video. It's going to be equal to something I'm going to make in a second. And then you make the type is equal to video slash MP4. We can go to the CDN URL, which again is this URL right here. So make sure it looks just like how I have it. There will be GitHub in the description though. Make sure you're using your Superbase URL though, but this end should look the same. And we are then going to just add the video.name. So what is the current name of this video? Because remember what we're doing is we're going into the CDN URL.com slash video.name. And that's how we're going to grab these different videos. All right, so now let's run on over back to our website. We can now see that we have videos showing up in our React application, and we're getting all the data from the certain video. We can even choose another video, upload it here, and there you go. It's going to show you another video in your feed. If you guys want to delete your videos or just you know clear it out for whatever reason, you can go to your buckets, make sure to reload, and it will show you all the videos in there. And you can just manually delete like this. Then if we go over to our React application and refresh, it's only going to show us the videos that are in our bucket. All right, guys, hopefully this was helpful in understanding how you can use Superbase storage to have actual video content in your applications. If you guys are interested in more content such as, you know, Superbase, React, even Next.js 13 as it gets to production ready, feel free to check out my content and feel free to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.